Hello everyone, Paul Hodgson, Box of Frogs. Been a while since I've made a video, so uh, here's a very quick one. I'm using a JPEG today just because I'd already created it. It's a bit of a nothing shot, really. I was just out uh, in a local town and um, just happened upon this uh, dismantled, well not dismantled, but this um, sort of market stall holding area. So just took a photograph for no other reason than <laughs> I had camera in hand and had nothing else better to do. Anyway, so uh, the the purpose of this particular video is to illustrate how to uh, do a duo tone uh, and a few other steps. So as you can see uh, over here, there's nothing going on at the moment. Uh, even if I activate those two first in the develop step. Um, there's actually no change. Actually, what I'm going to do is we're going to go for that sort of yellowy, greeny, bluey uh, toning from the image that you see on the screen. So the first step uh, is a, a general, it's the saturation and uh, warmth step. And as you can see, I've just, I'm going to reduce the saturation by m minus 40%. So if you can see that, I'll click on and off. Uh, nothing done to the opacity or blending modes, it's just as is. Next comes a fairly aggressive curve, an LCH curve. Let's turn that on. As you can see it's really very bright to the point that if I hold Shift and H I've got a little bit of clipping. To be honest, I'm not really bothered about that. It looks like it's going to be clipping here, or is clipping here, but in fact, Shift H to show highlight clipping, it isn't. So I'm fairly okay with that. And the reason why you might be looking at this curve going, wow, that's flattened out. Wow, flattened out. Well, I, you know, I don't mind. I'm looking for a really high contrast. Um, but I'm, what I'm not typically doing here is um, you might notice that the blend mode and not the blend mode, but whatever this section here, the opacity is. Um, I'm changing. I've changed it to luminance, chrominance, and um, so I'm not altering the colours with this very aggressive uh, S curve. You'll also notice that there's this here as well. I've pulled the whites down. If you watch this particularly this region, but you can also watch over here as well. If I do Shift H. You can see lots now of uh, clipping. If I drag the white point down, it kind of goes away. Now, as I'm toning it, it's also reducing the contrast and also introducing perhaps even a little bit of yellow, uh, although you're not really seeing that here. It's nothing too too major. And then we move to uh, levels and curves. And this is at the point where I'm introducing um, the colouring. I haven't activated the layer yet. Again, I'm sticking to luminance and chrominance. Let's have a look at the individual channels. Red. Flat line. Stayed where it is. Not. This is now activated the curve incident. Uh, sorry, this uh, particular adjustment, which is why it's it's gone this colour, which is the colour I was looking for. Um, the interesting ones are the green. It's a couple of points on here. I'm moving it north of the midpoint, effectively and north of. Um, this section here, I can delete that if I wanted to. It's not really going to change the uh, the curve much. You could really play about with this if you wanted to. And uh, below the intersecting line, if you can imagine, there's a, a linear line from the top left, sorry, top right to bottom left. Um, I could be, I could introduce some magenta, purple, whatever you want to call it, or go the other way and reduce. I'm going to leave that as is, and then the blue curve. Again, I've just moved the black point up a little bit, created this sort of sweeping curve, and brought the point down from this corner. And that introduces to the highlights just kind of a, s a slight yellow toning. And the more you bring it down, the more yellow it goes. So, I mean, it's an arbitrary thing. Bring it down to the point where you think it looks good to you. Okay, so in a couple of steps, I mean, you can't, you don't need to re really even use that one as well if you wanted to, but within three steps, we've gone from that to this. Um, if we wanted to, we could introduce black and white layer and remove all color 
accept and then introduce this sort of bluey greeny color so let's what let's see what else I've done okay what I was interested in doing was I want that that's a bit too bright and cheerful for me so what I wanted to do was to darken the border introduce a slight vignette So what I've done is I've produced that curve. It's quite a hard border for the moment. Uh, you know, I just took my selection tool, this box up here, and added a box af after I'd created the curve, and then used the minus key here to say anything within here, I don't want that uh, curve to affect. But you've still left with this fairly hard border. So up to selection, and we're going to feather it. Okay, so it's now feathered. The uh, what did I do with this? What's my opacity? Anything on that one? No, I left that one alone. Uh, next step, another LCH step. Again, bringing. Ah, have I created two? I think I might have created two. Ha ha ha! I have created two. Right, okay, we don't need to. Uh, that's my mistake for you. Shall we look at it? Yeah, yeah. So we'll ju I'll just delete that actually. Oh, that's a mistake. Um, this H LCH step really um, was to darken the entire image other than this. No, my mistake. Here we go. One of these days, I'll get it right. That was to darken that post. I do beg your pardon. So I took, I've created that layer, darkened the entire image, um, then drew a, um, a, a selection around it, and then clicked the plus button to say only affect that with this darkening curve. And then I feathered the transition between the hard marching ant line and the rest of the image again until it just looked right. So if we have a look at this again it has created here maybe the merest hint of a, of a halo but you know it kind of fits with the rest of this shutter door. It'll stick out like a sore thumb now that I've told you this. And then finally, high pass, a high pass filter, not on the entire image. Um, it's uh, it's quite large, 6.92, but watch this post. Boom! I put it in, created a um, a high pass layer. Effectively um, changed the entire image, but I was really looking for this, and then I've limited the high pass sharpening layer by again using my marquee tool to pick out the marquee let's uh, pick out the post um, once I had my uh, the radius setting as I wanted it and then came up to this fill used the plus came inside of the marquee and clicked inside of that marquee to say only affect the change in this area if I'd used the plus here with that marquee selected everything in here would have had this sharpening step applied to it apart from this and that's it dead easy I mean really really easy I hope you really enjoy this and um, again you know you can change the look by using curves applying um, the uh, the adjustments in wherever you want either by using a quick selection tool like this or a brush or whatever really so um, hope that's been useful uh, have a great day bye bye